Knock, knock. Thank you. Thank you for letting me introduce you to these awesome Torque Tank M1 hacks. All right, that beautiful intro came courtesy of my daughter, Audrey, who believes that knock dark jokes are hilarious, although I'm not entirely positive she understands how they work, uh, as well as ChatGPT. So if you didn't like that knock dark joke, go ahead and blame them. We have had a sled of some kind in our arsenal of equipment even before we had a garage gym. So. I set up a tire sled, a DIY tire sled, with a piece of plywood in it with a weighted sandbag backpack and a dumbbell and a few different things that we would drag on the side of our apartment. Um, we're talking well over a decade ago. Uh, definitely got some odd looks, uh, but it got the job done. We used that DIY tire sled concept for quite a few years until we got to the point where I was actually strong enough that we were ripping through those tires within a matter of months. Uh, it became a pain in the ass to get a new tire, burn through it, return it, get a new one, those kinds of things. Even though they were free, um, it's still a pain in the butt to have to do that on a regular basis. And sometimes you'd burn through it during a workout and then your workout was done. Um, it became harder and harder to continually load it because again, it's not meant to take weights or anything. Fast forward, I borrow a dragging sled from a buddy of ours and it didn't really work. Um, I put all the 45s on it I could and because it was metal on the concrete, it would just slide nice and easy. Um, didn't do what I wanted it to do. We then found a push type sled uh, on Marketplace. It was a Christian's Fitness Factory sled that we used for quite a while. So it came with the metal skids only, which we used for a bit until that was super terrible from a noise stance, uh, as well as you could see it beating up the concrete. We purchased the plastic skids for it, um, which worked for a bit, but we burnt through those. Well, I burnt through those, um, and it was just a pain in the ass to set up. Same thing, you were constantly loading heavy plates, carrying them from in the gym to out the gym, doing your warm-ups and more. Um, I would get to the point where I had like 10 or more plates on it, um, which was a workout in itself, and it just made me not want to actually use it for an accessory exercise, that kind of thing. So we were on the lookout for a better sled alternative, which is where we get the Torque Tank M1. I managed to find one used on Marketplace, uh, nearby, which was awesome, fit the budget, uh, and it made me not have to take a leap on something that I wasn't entirely positive about. Always one of my favorite parts about the marketplace. Today, we're going to talk about the hacks that I figured out to, I think, make this more usable, user-friendly, better in general. Um, if you are looking for a full-fledged review, link is down in the description. So. With that, let's get into the four and a half hacks for the Torque Tank M1. First hack is storage. So Torque came out with a very good wall storage option for people to store in their home gyms. They knew who their target audience was and knew that storage was a big piece to the puzzle. The problem for some of us, like myself, is that we do not have any bare walls to be able to make that work. Um, so I had to come up with a creative solution that did not require me to take down our wall control, Inspire FT2, move everything around, get rid of some bars, that kind of thing. So luckily we have our mass storage unit and I was able to, on the back side of the mass storage unit, set up a vertical wall type storage there with a couple of pieces. Took two of these storage hooks with two brackets and attached them to a strip of wood here. 
We then use zip ties to hold all of that on the mass storage unit. And now we can store the M1 right there on the back side of the mass storage. We essentially created our own wall storage. I recently decided to store the handles as well. So I took these PVC pipe clamps laying around from a garden project, but you could use a bunch of different solutions here depending on your personal setup. I drilled mine into the side of the frame here and now we're in business. Number two, this one's my favorite one. Running the sled outside, especially on those 100 plus degree days, can be pretty brutal for more than just the fact that the sled is hard work. Uh, it is painfully hot out there trying to stand on the black asphalt or even the sidewalk concrete. So one day I had an idea. We had bought this DeWalt job site fan to actually use at my daughter's soccer games. We kept it in the garage because we found it was useful to cool down various things. Uh, and then one day I thought, hey, uh, maybe it'll work for the sled. It fits perfectly. With adjustable speed on the fan, the cordless battery operation, and the tilting blades, you have a pretty legit attachment here to keep you just a little more comfortable in the hotter days. You'll see it sits pretty tight in there, can even hang on when being adjusted up and down, and it doesn't go anywhere during use. One of the number one complaints about the M1, one piece that we've struggled with as well, is reverse sled dragging. So it works very well from a push perspective, but as soon as you wanna involve those quads a little bit more, uh, the thing starts to get troublesome. So, what I have found actually works pretty dang well is this. The solution we found is to simply lean up against it. You still get to basically use it the way it was intended as a push sled, but you are facing the opposite way. So you're using the sled in the way it was intended, but using it to target the muscles you want. This works pretty dang well and actually isn't too uncomfortable. Um, I've tried it with a pad and different things like that and haven't found that that's made much of a difference or that it was necessary. Instead, you simply walk backwards like this and you're in business. The downside with this is, is that you obviously cannot see where you're going. So if you are pushing on a busy street or maybe down a sidewalk, you could have the tendency to fall off of the sidewalk or uh, kind of neander your way through the street and end up somewhere where you did not originally intend to be. So be careful. Number four and a half. Uh, this one is kind of a multi-parter here, which is why I call it the four and a half hacks instead of just four. So this is to leverage the sled and gravity to make it a more usable experience. So if you've got a driveway or a hill in your neighborhood nearby, you can make this work. As you can see, we have this decently steep driveway that typically gets in the way of exercise stuff, but here it actually works out pretty well. My two favorite options here are for upper body. You can do pushes up the hill to get some shoulder sled action in. It's essentially like a plyometric push, which is pretty cool. And the best is actually with the rope. You put in work here, dragging the sled up the driveway, and then just let it roll back into place. It's a perfectly timed rest period. This is actually my go-to way to use the sled for any dragging, pulling type movements, as it works way better than pulling it, having to turn it around, re-straighten out the rope, that kind of stuff. So it's a much better solution in my opinion. All right, everyone, that's it for today. Short and sweet, four and a half hacks for your Torque Tank M1. If you happen to have a Torque Tank M1 and you've got some hacks, share them down in the comments below. I'd love to learn more ideas. There's a few more floating around out there that I've seen that are pretty cool. Um, and I might share at some point when I get some more time to actually investigate them and put them to use. But that's why I wanna see what you've got. So maybe I can make a another hack video, uh, compiling all the other good stuff from everybody. So also, as I mentioned, if you don't have a torque tank and you're looking for information on the M1, you can hit the link below. 
I will have a link to the full written review for you. Um, if you're looking for more details, my buddy Adam at Garage Gym Lab, of course, has the M1 and the M4. Uh, my buddy Flex Marks the Spot has the M1, the M4, and the, I think it's the Zebex sled. He plans to do a review on that soon. Notes from Coach Carp because he has owned the M1 for so long that I wanted to get some notes from him in terms of upkeep and maintenance, things like that. He owns the wall storage unit, um, all the knickknacks and doohickeys and different things for it as well. So make sure you check out all those links below. I'll leave links to the people that I mentioned as well on their accounts or reviews or videos that they've got going, that kind of stuff. I've also got links to the various items mentioned in this video in the description below. So the DeWalt fan, the pull rope, the storage hooks, that kind of stuff. As always, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button. I will be back soon with more Room Gym Awesomeness to share with all of you. Peace. Europe. Europe who? No, Europe who? <laughs>